We are finally here, guys. We are finally reviewing Batman Under the Red Hood. This is my favorite DC animated film as a little kid. I have so much nostalgia with this movie as a little kid. Like, same nostalgia I had with The Dark Knight. So, yeah, this came out, like, two years after Gotham Knight. And I did like Gotham Knight as a little kid, but now I think it's, like, okay. Like, it has no story. But now we get to this film, and I was excited to rewatch this one because at the time, this was my favorite DC anime movie. And I just loved everything about it, and I just have a nostalgia feel. So, yeah, basically the reason I love this film back then was nostalgia. Like, I loved everything about it. Like, I have a nostalgia for this movie. So, does that nostalgia still hold up to this movie now that I rewatched it after, like, maybe, like, I don't know how many years? I haven't watched it since 2013. So... Well, ha do I still love this film as much as I do? Do I think it's still nostalgic? Yes, it's still nostalgic. This film is still phenomenal, and it is my favorite DC animated film still to this very day. It's still phenomenal, and it's still a masterpiece. So yeah, you already know my rating, but hey, if you want to check out why I love it so much, so yeah. This whole video is just going to be talking about positive and why this is a perfect Batman movie. Like, this, if I had to make a video saying top 10 best Batman movies of all time, including animated ones and live action ones, I would put this in the top 5 because this is phenomenal. Like, really good. Like, I just love this movie. Like, this is just a childhood. Like, this was just a nostalgia fest rewatching it. Like, I loved everything about it. So, the first thing I want to talk about is the opening scene. Um, there's not much to talk about the opening scene. It's basically showing Jason Todd's death and the differences, how it's changed. Like, it's not with the whole mother story. Like, I like that, but I think I like this idea better because, well, this I saw first. I saw this before I read the actual comic book of Jason Todd's death. So, yeah, I do think that the opening scene's really good. I love everything about it. I love how Rachel Gould's kind of regretting that he made alliance with the Joker because he had no idea Robin was, like, with Batman on this mission, so, and this priest tells Rachel Gould that Batman's not gonna save Robin in time, and Rachel Gould regrets that, and he's upset that Batman failed to save Robin, Batman's upset about this, like, he almost wants to go to kill the Joker, but he didn't anyway, but he's still pissed at Joker, obviously, like, he, near, like, what, five years later, when we get to, like, Jason Todd's Red Hood, him, Batman and I we interrogate Joker, and Batman almost strangles Joker to death when he mentions Jason, so, yeah, like, as a little kid, I didn't, like, really recognize it, but now that I'm rewatching, I'm like, oh, man, oh, man, so, yeah, the opening scene's really good, I love it, I love the scene where Batman's, like, holding Robin, like, how it was in the comic, and I think it's a lot better here, because it's, like, nighttime, and it's a lot more emotional, the music and everything, so, yeah. So now we get to the animation. The animation is flat out awesome. Like, it's flat out amazing. Batman Gotham Knight has also really good animation. Mainly for the episode 6, the Dutch episode, the animation was gorgeous on that. But here I like the animation more, mainly because it's not anime-like. I'm not saying anime-like animation is bad, but I just feel like, like, it gets, like, for Gotham Knight, the animation gets too much gorgeous, where it gets, like, eh, like, okay, that's a little too much. Here the animation is phenomenal, and I kind of wish... They use this animation for the DC animated movie universe, you know, the New 52 movies. Well, I'll, actually, no, I'm glad they used the animation they did, because I would prefer if they use this for Man of Tomorrow, the same animation style. Like, Man of Tomorrow animation was horrible, so I would have preferred if they used this kind of animation style, like, have it be in the same universe as Under the Red Hood. Like, that would have been cool, like, really cool. So, yeah, the animation is amazing. I love the character designs. I love Rachel Gould's design. Batman, Nightwing, Robin... Um, Red Hood, Joker, Riddler, and pretty much everyone. Like, the animation is phenomenal to this very day. Like, I love it. And I would love to have this animation style for a future Batman cartoon. Like, that would be awesome. Or for, well, I don't want to say future animated movie, but maybe for a cartoon. Like, that would be awesome, if you ask me. Like, I watch that series every day for this animation style, because I just love it. So, yeah. And now we're on to Batman and Nightwing teaming up to stop Red Hood. And, excuse me, so this is in the beginning of the film... Where Batman and Nightwing team up again, and I like this scene because, like, they're teaming up, like, it's the old Batman and Robin, well, not, well, the older Robin, the first Robin, like, he's teaming up with Batman again as Nightwing, and they're stopping the Red Hood. But sadly, it's only, like, around for, like, two minutes when they, well, Nightwing's in the movie for, like, like, five minutes, because the reason he's gone for most of the film after, because he broke his leg during the second time they catch the Red Hood, and I don't mind that at all, but I, I like that Nightwing was in the film, like, I like that. I liked how he got to see it, and it would have been cool he if he got to find out who Jason Todd, that Jason Todd was the Red Hood, but I'm fine with that not, because, again, like, it's mostly about Batman and Jason, not Batman, Nightwing, and Jason. So, yeah, I do like the team-up with Batman and Nightwing, because it reminds you of the good old days, 
And that's what and Nightwing even says, you know what I miss about Team Up with you? The toys. Like, he missed playing with Batman's toys. So, yeah. But sadly, Nightwing broke his leg, and Batman has to do it alone. And he doesn't want Nightwing to get, like, killed in an accident like that again. Well, because he was nearly killed due to his broken leg. So, yeah. I do like that team up where they fight the Red Hood. And, um, I forgot the robot they were fighting, but he kind of looks like that Shazam villain, if you know what I mean. Like, Amazo. Like, he's a robot thing. I like that, too, because they were teaming up. Like, again, just to remind you of the good old days when they teamed up. And another thing I liked is... Jason Todd flashbacks, like, as Robin. Like, I love Robin's costume design. As a little kid, like, I like the little kid flashbacks, but I love the teenage flashbacks where Robin's costume, like, he has all red, like, that's, for me, the fan of Robin costume where he's just all red. Like, I like that a lot. Like, well, mainly for Jason Todd. For Robin, well, Dick Grayson Robin, it's more of, like, you know, li the little Robin he has. Like, he still has those leg things, but, well, maybe for his Teen Titans 2003 design, that's teenage Dick Grayson. But for little Dick Grayson and little Jason Todd, it's that kind of Robin costume. So, yeah, for Jason Todd, like, his teenage costume, it's all red. And that's probably be the same for Tim Drake for when he's a teenager because he did have that kind of costume. So, I do love the costume design for Robin. This film it's phenomenal. It's my favorite version of Robin's costume. And this film actually got me into Robin a lot. Like, I always did like Robin before this movie, but... I don't know, it just kind of introduced me more about Robin, like, who he was and all that stuff. Like, like I just liked it. I really liked it. I liked the costume design, because he looked more badass. Because I remember I used to have a friend who said Robin was always fruity, the way he looked. So I'm, like, showing this film, and I'm like, you're saying this again? Robin's badass in this movie. Like, he did say, like, Robin was kind of, like, a dick in this, but then that's Jason Ty. He's kind of, like, a dick. Like, he's a dick. He's a dickhead. Like, but then he kind of, like, matures and get learning. Luckily, Jason Todd's not as big as a dickhead as Damien. You know, I actually know that Damien and Tim Drake have a rivalry with each other. Like, because Tim Drake tried to be friendly. But I would have loved if Jason and Damien had a rivalry with each other in the DC anime movie universe. Because I can tell they would not like each other. Like, that would be awesome, if you ask me. But sadly, that's not going to happen. So, yeah, Jason Todd as Robin is awesome. And it is kind of sad when you think about, it, like, the little flashbacks of Robin at the end. Like... The little, when Jason Todd was first Robin, not teenage Robin, because teenage Robin, like, he gets more, like, mature and kind of gets more violent, like, kind of, like, you know, tougher and more of a dickhead. So, let's go back to his first years as Robin when he's a little kid. Like, at the end of the film, we get one more final flashback of Dick, Jason, not Dick, Jason Todd's first year as Robin, and Robin tells Batman, come on, Batman, we gotta fight bad guys. And then Jason goes on top of the Batmobile and he says to Bruce, this is the greatest day of my life. And the film cuts to black. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty sad. Because even when I first saw this movie as a little kid, I thought the ending was pretty sad because, like, this is how it ends. Like, especially with the final battle scene, which we'll get to at the end of the video. Like, that scene alone was just sad. Like, like, which is like, like, the, Jason says it's the greatest day of my life. And you know how Jason's going to turn up as the years goes on, as he becomes Robin later on. Like, like that's going to be sad because he's going to get killed one day. Like, that's the sad thing. Yeah. So another thing I want to talk about is the Batman and Red Hood team up where they fight these ninja assassins that Black Mask hire because Black Mask is scared of the Red Hood because Red Hood's taking over his gang and all that stuff. So yeah. And I like the team up because it kind of reminds you of like what before Jason became Robin, the good old days. So it's the same thing with Dick Grayson when he was Robin. It's like the good old days. And here I like it. Like I like it. I like this. I also like when they defeat them all. Like um Jason like. Tells Batman to look out, or, like, Batman, like, not Batman, Jason saves Batman, even though he, like, kind of despised him as he became the Red Hood because he didn't, he didn't kill the Joker after he died. But I like that he did that, I like how he did that. And Batman doesn't really appreciate that Jason doing the Red Hood stuff, but he doesn't really know that Jason is the Red Hood yet. He just doesn't like that Red Hood is, like, killing people. Like, he, Red Hood's basically Batman, except he kills people. Like, Batman doesn't like that and stuff like that. Like, you all know the things. Like, it's just phenomenal. Like, the act, the, all the stuff. Like, the, the, like, I know it sounds like I'm stuttering a lot, but I'm just, like, getting too excited when I'm reviewing this movie. Like, this movie's just phenomenal. So, yeah, I do love the team-up between them. Like, it's just, it was a great thing. Like, I love that. I would love to see that in live action where Jason still despises Bruce. Well, we both despise each other before Bruce finds out that Jason Todd is the Red Hood. Like, they both team up to each other. Like, even Jason, like, helps like tells Bruce to look out maybe if that was in live action that'd be phenomenal but I hope DC does not screw that up in live action because in live action that'd be like really phenomenal and probably one of the best scenes in live action if you ask me like as I was like watching this movie like all the emotional moments with Red Hood and Bruce like 
I'm, like, just thinking, this stuff would be awesome in live action. Like, it kind of sucked, because I'm in worried if DC's gonna screw it up, which I hope they don't. Not really DC themselves, more of Warner Brothers, since most of the decisions they make in the DCU is their fault, not really Zack Snyder besides Batman Killing. But I'm gonna let that slide you the Snyder Cut. Okay, so yeah, that team up was good. And then we get to, like, Black Mask hires the Joker to kill Red Hood. So, Black Mask only hires the Joker because the Red Hood was about to kill him. He killed pretty much, he took all the weapons, he killed all of Black Mask's men, and all that stuff. So, basically, Black Mask is horrified of him, and he gets the Joker to kill him. But then Joker backstabs Black Mask and brings Red Hood's, well, supposedly Black Mask's old gang to work for the Red Hood now, and he brings them all to a truck and pours gasoline on them, basically about to light him up, and then Red Hood comes along and basically tells Joker, like, they met before, and he's getting, like, waiting for the revenge. And Joker's, like, has no idea who the hell this guy is, but he's, like, saying, like, oh, I know you. Well, he knows the outfit he's wearing. He knows who the Red Hood is, because he was the Red Hood one time. But it's basically a flashback to the Killing Joke story, if you know what it means. Like, in both Death of the Family and this film, they both reference the Killing Joke. So, yeah, the Killing Joke did happen in this universe. Like, I like to say that this is kind of a main DC universe. I like to say this is the definitive version of Under the Red Hood. Like, I would, like, retell the story for a Batman cartoon if you ask me. Like, this is just good. So, yeah. So, when Batman puts out the fire because he, because Joker threw, like, a, um, what was that thing when you, like, you know, when you light up a cigarette? I forgot what it was. A lighter, a lighter, like a lighter. So, he throws the lighter and so, like, it's, he's about to burn, they're all about to burn, and Batman has a fire extinguisher on his bat plane, and he puts it out, and Batman uses a grappling hook from his bat plane, and tags the Joker, and, well, Jason somehow gets good luck, and jumps on Joker, and cuts the grappling hook, and they land in the water, and Jason kidnaps the Joker, and he tells Batman, you want to find me? Um, meet me in the alleyway, like, and basically, he's referring to the alleyway where Batman and Jason first met. So basically, we get to the scene where, well, not Joker, Jason beats Joker with a crowbar, basically referring to the opening scene, like, it's giving us that vibe, like, what happened, like, like, I like that, I like that a lot, I'm sure they did in the comic, but whoever, like, thought that idea was, like, that was a good idea, like, that was awesome, like, I think, I did not read the comic of Under the Red Hood, but I feel like, like, they followed the comic a lot, like, that was really good, if you ask me. Like, I'm just going on defending this film from now on. Like, this film is phenomenal. Like, if anyone said this film sucks, fuck you. Like, I know it's your opinion, but fuck you. Like, this film's phenomenal. So, now let's get to Jason Todd's resurrection. So, they kind of changed Jason Todd's resurrection. In the comic, it was more of a... It first started with a Superboy story where he punched, like, the glass of time. And that brought back Jason Todd. And I kind of thought, like, eh, that's kind of stupid. Like, I thought that was stupid. Like, when I found that out. But here, in the movie, they... Rachel Ghoul, like I said, he regrets that Jason Todd died. Because he had no idea Robin was on the same mission... Was with Batman on the mission. So, he replaces Jason's body with a mannequin. And Batman didn't look over because he was upset and everything. And anger. Like, he was too distracted to look for evidence if that was really his body. So, Rachel Ghoul takes Jason's body and puts it in the Lazarus pit. And Jason comes back to life. And he... Like, basically a complete psycho. Like, he's all, like, he's, like, dressed like a mummy right now. He's all crazy. Like, as a little kid, that scene scared me so much. Like, 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 the screaming and everything. The way he looks when he came out of the Lazarus pit. Like, it was all horrifying. And the way he moved and everything. Like, and the music. Like, everything was just horrifying about that scene as a little kid. And I do, to this day, I still prefer that Jason Todd coming back with the Lazarus pit. I prefer this idea better than the comic. Like, just have Superboy punch the glass of time, and then have Jason just come back to life, because that was the only change, really. And I thought that's just completely stupid. I'm glad they changed it and have just Jason Todd come back through the Lazarus Pit. And they use that idea ever since, because that's a lot smarter idea. That's a 100% smarter idea, if you ask me. And I'm sure a lot of people agree with me that it's a much better idea. I'm just glad that that's the definitive resurrection of him, and not that stupid Superboy one. So now let's get to the final battle. The final battle is probably the best scene of this entire movie because it's so intense. Like, close to the end when they're done fight, when they're stomp Well, as they're fighting, like, Batman, like, loses his utility belt. Jason loses his max and jacket. So, basically, they get to this apartment that Jason lives in, like, a abandoned one. And Jason has the Joker hostage. And, basically, Jason tells him, like, you gotta kill me or him. And J Batman's like basically telling him why he, he doesn't kill people. Like, if he does that, he'll never come back. 
and all that stuff. Like, that's, I'm not gonna, I like, actually, I'm gonna link that scene in the description, because I can't explain it alone, because that scene is just phenomenal. Probably the best scene of the entire movie. And it's better than any emotional moment in the DC animated movie universe, if you ask me. Like, this scene was, like, this scene alone was intense. Like, Especially when Batman drops the gun and walks away and Jason's like, Decide! Him or me! Decide! And then Jason, like, pulls the trigger and then Batman dodges the bullet and throws a battering at the gun and the gun explodes and Jason's hand starts bleeding and all that stuff. And Jason sets up the bomb in the apartment. Joker tries Bat- Joker makes Batman not the star of the bomb, but Batman punches Joker in the face. He takes Jake in. He- Pardon me. He takes Jason before the bomb explodes and then the bomb blows up and- Jason's body's nowhere to be found, but Joker, who's still alive, laughing is, like, laughing, like, almost like he's, like, just too injured. He's, like, just laughing. He's not, like, crazy laughing, but he's, like, just laughing. And, yeah, like, that was good. And basically, it ends with Jason Todd still on the run. And that's where we lead to, like, you know, the final flashback of Jason saying, this is the greatest day of my life. So, yeah, I actually thought, like, this was an emotional movie. Like, close to the final act was emotional. Like, this film is really good. Like... I highly recommend if you're a hardcore Batman fan and you love the Red Hood. So yeah, I give this film a 10 out of 10. A masterpiece, and it's one of the best DC animated films. If not the greatest animated DC film of all time. So yeah, 10 out of 10. Let me know what you think of this movie, and I'll see you guys next time when I review Batman Year One.